Um, we have um, been looking for this young lady. We believe it's the person we've been looking for. So uh, that brings the total confirmed fatalities in this event up to three so far. Uh, we, are, we are making dents today. Uh, this is a huge project, and it will be ongoing for a long time. Um, many, many communities in our western mountains are completely isolated. There is no road access, no telephone information, no power, no water, no septic, no sewer. And so we have our hands full simply trying to continue to assess what we have on our hands. We know that we've lost every roadway uh, leading to the western end of our county, and uh, the folks on the west end of our county are isolated with no, uh, no way for us to get to them and no way for them to get to us uh, except through uh, air operations. We have currently four helicopters in use, three uh, of the large uh, Black Hawk helicopters and a, a smaller Lakota uh, through the National Guard. We are using those helicopters to relay humanitarian aid to some of the communities that are isolated, like the town of Jamestown, for instance. Uh, we are also using them to uh, insert search and rescue uh, operations into the mountains uh, and also for medical evacuations. Given the nature of the roadways and the extensive damage to the roadways, we are going to be heavily dependent on air operations for uh, quite a while. The, the roadways aren't simply blocked by uh, mudslides or rock slides or debris. The roadways are, in fact, in, in many, many places, completely gone. And so restoration and recovery and, and the ability to um, put people back on the road or get people up into those mountains is going to be difficult for an extended period of time. We have... Um, Thank you. We've made some good progress in regards to evacuating the town of Lyons. We have evacuated several hundred people so far. The evacuation, as you know, is taking the form, the evacuations are taking the form of uh, high profile or high uh, clearance vehicles from the, the guard going in to the town of Lyons, evacuating people out to a point on Highway 66 where that we can then get them into uh, bus transportation. From there, they're being taken to the, the LifeBridge Christian Church on Highway 66 on the north side of Longmont. Uh, in many cases, uh, family members are reuniting at that point, and the people are leaving. They're not actually um, sheltering there. We're attempting to uh, um, make sure that we document and find out you know, everybody that's been evacuated so that we can continue to reunite families and get information to people that are calling in looking for loved ones. The operation to evacuate the town of Lyons will continue throughout the day and could result in as many as 2,500 people being transported out of that community. That's good news for them in that they've lost their, uh, their sewer plant, their water plant, their power, um, and it will be difficult to sustain or replace or repair those, that infrastructure for quite a while. Um, again, the thing that worries us the most are the things that we don't know right now. We don't know about lives lost, homes lost, um, people stranded in many, many of the canyon areas in our, in our upper communities. Um, and the effort to assess that, document it, and get people in there is going to be ongoing for several days. Um, the Type 2 incident management team has come into town. Uh, they've arrived. We've met with them. There's been uh, a briefing and a, a conversation around delegation of authority, and their responsibilities and our continuing responsibilities. Um, we will be in briefing or meeting with the entire management team from that Type 2 incident management team this evening. Um, and then there will be a transition of responsibility for operational management of this of this event to that federal team at uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. They will continue to organize and manage and coordinate the efforts of many, many local responders, first responders, in addition to federal assets that they're bringing in. 
urban search and rescue teams, uh, more air support, um, more trucks, more National Guard folks. Uh, we expect to, you know, to fully double the size of the people we have working on this event uh, within the next 24 hours or so. Waters are receding. Uh, if you go out into the city right now, there's many places that, where the pavement's dry and things look great. Um, the issue with that is that uh, people are going to want to travel. They're going to want to um, recreate. They're going to want to go to work. And uh, we still have uh, forecasts for flash flood warnings for this evening. So the waters that have receded in many places, we could very well be back in the same condition that we were yesterday. Uh, this is a wait and see game. As you know, the forecast is looking better and better as we get into next week. And at that point, we ought to be making tremendous progress. I think that's probably little solace for the people that are waiting in the mountains for someone to come and help them. And uh, that is by far our greatest priority right now is to get into those communities and find out what we have going on up there. So um, we have folks from the university. We have folks from the school district, uh, FEMA, uh, Boulder Fire Department. Uh, I'm gonna. Is there anybody that wants to address these guys, and then we can take questions? Or okay. Uh, Briggs Gamblin, Boulder Valley School District. Uh, two announcements we need to make that uh, uh, that have been decided since the briefing this morning. One is that we had rescheduled, as the camera accurately reported, we had rescheduled um, our football games that were originally going to happen on Thursday night and tonight uh, to Saturday morning. Uh, however. Because of the uh, situation in the community, because of the uh, restoration efforts that are beginning, hopefully, and, and, but because also the possibility of continued flooding uh, tonight, uh, the decision has been made by the school district to cancel all athletic events over the weekend. Uh, so the, all of those games announced in the camera this morning for rescheduling are postponed, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to reschedule them at a later date and we will notify, uh, our, our athletic directors have been notified, and they will notify our players, and we'll, we'll take care of that. The other thing was that came up this morning was the discussion of 85 fifth graders, and there are 14 um, teacher and parent sponsors who are at the uh, Calwood um, uh, Outdoor Education Center up above Jamestown, uh, with, and near, by the way, near the uh, Denver Public Schools Ballarat Center. Uh, we had had some hope. The kid, first of all, let me just emphasize once again, as we have in several communications to parents, that the children are safe and sound. They're in a good, dry situation. The weather's good where they're at. Uh, they're uh, well fed and uh, they have sanitation and they're, they're doing very well. Um, however, we had hoped to, as, as early as, as late as this morning, that there would be a way for um, the section of road uh, that's been in, severely impacted between Calwood and the uh, pay, where the pavement begins just above Jamestown, that that could be put in some kind of shape that uh, the students could be transported and then transported out uh, back to their school, which is Fireside Elementary School in Louisville. But we got word that that will not happen for some time, that stretch of road. So we have informed those parents that uh, their children will be transported out by helicopter to Boulder, um, and they will, uh, and then from uh, Boulder, they will be transported via school bus back to Louisville Elementary, and parents will be given that schedule as soon as we have it. It may not occur today. It may not occur today, but when we have that information, we'll be sharing it with parents as well. So uh, we appreciate all the work of the Office of Emergency Management and the Flood Control Center that we've been working with, but. Uh, the children, the important thing is the students are safe and sound and there uh, is a um, plan, a safe plan in the works to get them um, back to their families as soon as possible. Thank you. Do you all have questions? Yes, yeah, Sheriff, earlier this morning you mentioned there were 20 people unaccounted for. Do you have any updates on that information? I do not. How do you? Unfortunately, that number has risen to approximately 80 people that are currently unaccounted for. And again, that's not saying that these people are missing. It's saying that people have tried to get a hold of them and perhaps their cell phone's dead um, because of the loss of power or they just haven't been able to get in contact with them. 
what should someone do if they think they have someone who's unaccounted? I mean, I can see where, you know, it kind of can get down the line to like my third aunt twice removed can't get hold of me. I mean, what should people do? When should they call you and what are you guys trying to do? If people have loved ones um, that they think are in the area and are unaccounted for, they can't get a hold of them, they should absolutely call the Emergency Operations Center and let us know where they are, um, what their believed condition is, and then we will con go out and look for them. And what about if I'm one of the unaccounted for persons, but I don't know I'm unaccounted for? What I mean, how are you guys coordinating with that? Well, if people call in and say that I just I was just rescued, when we bring people out, we're trying to get their name and address and documenting who's brought out, and then matching up the missing. Okay, so um, I just want to clarify, this isn't like some of these people just saying, I can't get hold of Bill or something, and I thought he was vacationing in Boulder. These are people who you guys have exhausted. I mean, how, how do you want us to explain this? Just, you see what I'm trying to ask? I'm sorry. Um, you know, if, if there's people that you believe that are in the area and that live there or were vacationing there, please contact us, give us name, information as to where they were, and we will go out and look for them. So... We, we were getting calls, uh, some examples, we're getting calls from people whose uncle or grandfather or whoever lived in the area or they were vacationing in the area, that kind of thing. We're getting a lot of calls like that. Um, in many cases, um, in many cases, it's just an assumption they're here. This is the last we've heard from them. And, of course, we've lost cell towers and we've lost landline connections in those mountain areas. And so uh, they may very well be high and dry and safe and sound but we're un they're unable to be contacted right now. So we're keeping a database. As the people are coming into LifeBridge, for instance, we're getting their information and we're cross-checking and we're trying to make sure that we inform relatives where people are. But I expect that list to probably grow for a period of time and then subside. Sure. You mentioned that the number of people working this will double. What numbers are we talking about? How many people working it now? You know, yesterday um, between... Uh, excuse me, my days are bleeding together here. This morning, between uh, local res first responders, uh, incident overhead, and the urban search and rescue teams and that, the folks that we had working, we had about 400 people uh, tasked. Um, we have uh, two more urban search and rescue teams uh, arriving probably this afternoon. We have several more helicopters on order. We have you know, quite a few more resources coming in. So that number could double as far as the amount of people assigned to this. And that that's search and rescue. <coughs> that doesn't include the effort that's beginning to take place in regards to um, the road, the roadways and the bridges and, and all that work that's going to have to take place as well. And the three deaths for Boulder County on the three confirmed fatalities occurred in Boulder County. I don't have any information on any, any place else in the state, and I'm not aware of any fatalities in the city, actually. When you talk about the folks you've rescued, how many rescues do you think you guys have performed? What do you consider a, a rescue? Um, are the 20, are the, you know, the 2,000 some people come out of Lyons a, a rescue? Um, we have been performing search and rescue on an individual and small scale basis you know, constantly throughout this entire event. And I have no way of tracking that because those are efforts being made by local first responders on their own initiative. Uh, in many cases, uh, neighbors, um, you know, people they come across, in some cases responding to 911 calls or distress calls. H hundreds of people have been assisted in one way or the other. So far, and I have no idea how we would estimate that at this point. You know, we have the washed out roads where there will be temporary repairs made while well, the permanent ones are being done. In, in some cases, there will. You know, um, they're explaining the process to me of, of uh, dropping uh, culverts into those things and filling them with uh, heavy rock and, and that kind of thing in order just to hopefully establish a pathway for a high clearance vehicle. And then obviously, there's work to be done after that to actually restore the road to full use. But I think, uh, obviously, life safety and, and getting uh, into those isolated areas are going to demand uh, a rapid and perhaps sort of uh, hasty uh, you know, rigging of something to get, get folks up there. 
Sheriff, if I'm in a town like Jamestown, what should I do? Or if I had family there, what should I, or what would you tell me if I had family there? The good, one of the things about Jamestown that's been helpful is we have had uh, radio contact on a pretty continuous basis with their fire chief. Um, they have a volunteer fire department. They're on our radio network. They've been talking to us. They're, they're in, they've been in pretty good shape, except for the fact that they don't have food and water. They don't have running water. They don't have sanitation. I mean, but they're, they've been in a safe place in the school, which is up on a, on a high hill and over the flooded area. So... Um, the bottom line is we they can't get out, we can't get in. They have made, a, and I believe it's been done, they were dropping, uh, wa they were taking water and food and supplies in by helicopter this afternoon. That was one of the higher priorities. So basically, there's really no choice but to hunker down, be patient, know that help is coming, and they are working, uh, people are working around the clock, as hard as they possibly can to get those roadways open to get help in. Uh, please know that we are uh, we're working hard. We're uh, very concerned about them, and um, they're going to have to be patient. This is an unprecedented event for any of us on a local scale. Sheriff, sure, how does it? I hear a little bit of emotion in your voice. I mean, this is your county. These are your people. I mean, sure. how, how hard is it for you? Well, it's difficult, and part of the emotion comes from the fact that I've had about three hours of sleep in the last three days. But um, yeah, this is my this is my home. This is where I grew up. Um, you know, I have relatives that have been evacuated that are at my home again. Um, so it does get to be a bit of an emotional deal, and I really feel the pain of the parents that are waiting for their kids to come down out of the mountains. I really feel the pain, especially for the people who have no idea whether their loved one uh, is okay whether their loved one's home is okay. That's a big deal, and, and we get it. And, and you know, all of, these, all of these events always result in um, a lot of anguish and a lot of impatience and sometimes finger pointing. Um, I'm here to assure everybody that the people in this county uh, and the people in this city have been working around the clock as hard as they can to, to try to resolve this or get some resolution for them. Do you have any kind of count on number of homes damaged and or destroyed? No, not at all. We know that it's going to be a large number. That's the best I can tell you. Did the weather today give you a chance to check out any infrastructure? or not You know, um, the weather has given us a break to do a lot of flights. And we were hoping early on to do a reconnaissance flight and start doing some of that assessment. However, life safety missions took precedence. So um, the first several uh, dozen flights have been dedicated to humanitarian relief or uh, rescue. Um, I was able to get Mike Chard up a little while ago in a helicopter, and I believe he's up now. So he should be up, and, and that may be very helpful in regards to an assessment from the air about what kind of losses we, we're going to see. When you saw lions, uh, did you take a look at that one? What did that tell you when you saw the devastation from the helicopter? I haven't been in a helicopter. I, I, I've seen some footage of lions, though, as the stream goes down, as the, the raging river, I shouldn't call it a stream, as the river goes down and things back up and we're able to get in further and further on the roadway, um, it, you know, that these communities are all suffered long-term losses. This is going to take a while. This is uh, very large in scary scale, even compared to, say, the uh, Four Mile Fire that we had. The, re the recovery and the work that's going to go into getting over this and back to normal is uh, long term and very, very expensive. Sheriff, sure. uh, I have a report uh, that uh, people are actually being airlifted out of Jamestown and being landed at the airport. Is that correct? That'd be great news if that's happening. I was aware that they were going to be taking. It is. It is. It is okay. Happening. Okay. Thank you. The last, my, the last update I had was they were going to be doing humanitarian aid, uh, medicine, uh, water, food. If they're actually pulling people out, that's that's great news. In, in which airport are we talking about? Boulder Municipal Airport. All right.
Thank you. There's some other folks there. Okay, great. I'm all done. <laughs> I'm Kim Cobell. I'm the public information officer for um, the Boulder Police and Fire Department. Um, and as Sheriff Pelley said, this is going to be an ongoing situation for a number of days. Even with the reprieve from the rain and the weather that we've had today, we have rain in the forecast, and we're hearing that we could get half an inch an hour. And so if that actually does happen and we get um, a storm tonight, we could be back where we were um, yesterday, and that would not be good news for us. In the city of Boulder, we still have some issues on some of the roads. Some of the roads have dried out, um, and they seem uh, passable, but there are large debris piles in a lot of the intersections. And so um, some of those intersections contain logs from trees. Um, there are many areas where debris is backed up against fences, and there are lakes in Boulder um, where there were no lakes previously. Another issue is Table Mesa and Broadway. That is shut down. We are actually concerned about the infrastructure out there. The pavement is buckling, and that is because the roads and uh, grounds are so saturated that there is nowhere for the water to go, and so it's creating an issue for our roads. The um, uh, CFS for Boulder Creek in the municipal area is 2,300 um, cubic feet per second right now. That was 3,000 this morning. To give you some context, um, usually it's at 100 CFS. So we have gotten some relief um, down there, but again, we're still very concerned. And the Boulder Police Department is asking people to continue to stay off the roads and not travel. Even if we're able to deal with some of these intersections and some of these infrastructure issues and some of the debris piles, we still need room for public works to go out and uh, clear those areas and make those areas safe. As Sheriff Pelley mentioned, um, the National Guard is out there using the Boulder Municipal Airport um, as sort of a drop-off for um, some of the evacuated victims. I believe that they are being uh, bused to other places, but you will see those helicopters flying over the city of Boulder um, and using the airport as a base. The airport is closed to private planes right now. OSMP, Open Space and Mountain Parks. I need to mention that the mayor um, signed an emergency declaration yesterday. And that declaration means that it is illegal um, for people to go out into our open space and mountain parks right now. And the problem with those parks are that we have unstable bridges, um, we have some mudslides, and there are issues with the trailheads. And we actually have had people um, go out there today. It is not safe. The reason we're asking people not to go there is because there are safety issues that we are trying to mitigate right now. So until further notice, open space and mountain parks areas are going to be closed. Last night, Chief Mark Beckner put um, two evacuation orders in place. Um, those evacuation orders are going to stay in place. The first order went out to about um, four 4,000 people. That was from the mouth of Canyon to Broadway, and the north side of that was Pearl, and the south side was Marine, and that was because they were in an area where we were experiencing a lot of water. A second alert went out uh, Broadway East to the eastern limit of the city. Um, that was 75th along the Boulder Creek Corridor. We have talked about um, lifting that evacuation order. We are not going to do that right now, and that's because we're concerned about the weather that may be coming in. We don't want to tell people to go home and then have to tell them in an hour or two we have to bring you back out. Um, in downtown Boulder in the 100 block of Arapahoe, we had a small uh, business building uh, collapse because of the water. No one was in the building. That building was in that evacuation area. So no one was hurt in that. But it gives you an idea of some of the infrastructure issues um, that we are having right now. And I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them for City of Boulder, Police or Fire. Kim, when we were driving around today, you know, the sun was out and everybody was out taking pictures and things like that. And we saw some people kind of like waiting and sort of that, we're in the floodwaters and stuff like that. I mean, what would you tell people about that? Well, you need to stay out of the floodwaters because here's what's in them rebar from construction sites, you have tree branches. You don't know what you're walking into. You also don't know how deep that is. Um, and we've have done rescues, and as Sheriff Kelly has said, right we have had to go out who are, to get people out uh, Giving us the very latest information, uh, a very somber uh, Sheriff Joe Pelly uh, talking about uh, all that's taken place in Boulder at one point and talking about the fact that from the west side of the area, there are no roads. They're just gone on the west side of the city. He did confirm three deaths in Boulder County. The woman that they had been looking for who had been reported missing, uh, they did confirm that death. They also say that there are 80 people unaccounted for in Boulder right now, and, uh, and that was not to alarm anyone. They're just trying to make sure that they have 
everyone accounted for. So, but 80 people right now that they have on their list and they have folks going to LifeBridge Church in Longmont mm -hmm. and they're uh, creating a database, so to speak, there right. because that is where they are, are telling people to go from uh, the Boulder County areas. That's one of the... Um, uh, um, What's the, the, the word I'm looking for? Evacuation One of the centers. shelters yeah, that the Red Cross has right. opened up at LifeBridge, that's where they're trying to, to gather some of that, that information. But he did say the western part of that county, yeah. isolated, no power, no water, no communication. A lot of uh, landlines are out, cell towers are out. And right. so we know that people are stuck and they're trying to do their very best, as yeah. he said, to get aid in to those folks and to get those folks out who uh, who need some, some medical help. And even as he was